Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. As most of you know, I'm also a VMware V expert and an HPE influencer. Over the years, quite a few of you have been asking me to do a video or a blog post on my uh, home lab, so I decided to do a quick brief video today. I'll be doing a more in-depth video and blog post in the future, so stay tuned for that. But for now, let's check out my home lab. And here we are. Compute and storage, air conditioner, and spare cables. We'll just start off with the uh, compute here. You'll notice that I actually have quite a few uh, stickies uh, blocking serial numbers and whatnot. Um, I actually purchased all of this equipment brand new and uh, I've been maintain maintaining it with HPE care packs to uh, make sure that I have warranty and support on it since. So I just want to make sure that none of the serial numbers get out. Um, so here we have uh, two HPE DL360P Gen 8 servers. Uh, the uh, both servers are dual processor. Each has 20 cores inside of it. Uh, the top server has 256 gigs of RAM, the bottom server has 128 gigs of RAM. Uh, both servers have dual copper uh, 10G base T ports, as well as uh, dual 10 gig SFP plus ports, and as well as a quad 1 gig uh, 1G base T uh, NIC in each of the servers. Um, you'll notice that on top of the one server, I have an AMD Fire Pro S7150 X2 GPU. Uh, this GPU is attached to the top server. Um, as a lot of you probably are aware, this is not a supported GPU for this server just because of the thickness. So I actually had to use a PCI Express extension cable. Because of this, um, I had to come up with a solution for cooling as well as powering the GPU. You'll notice that I have a uh, custom cooling solution attached to the GPU as well as a power supply which provides the uh, extra power to the power ports on the GPU. Both of these servers are running uh, VMware ESX 6.5, I believe, or it could be 6.7, um, whatever the latest supported version is for the Gen 8s. Um, both of the servers have uh, dual 10 gig DACs running to this HPE MSA 2040 SAN. This HPE 2040 SAN has 24 900 gig dual port SAS drives. The first two columns are configured in RAID 10. The third column is configured in RAID 5. I have all my primary storage on these two and then I do a disk to disk backup that runs on the RAID 5. Again, these are DAC, and then I also have the dual 10 gig, uh, 10 G base T copper cables uh, running to the uh, backbone of the network here. Uh, the backbone is a Ubiquiti US 16 XG 10 gig switch. Um, you'll notice the uh, 10 G base T uh, cables connectors there, and then the SFP plus DAC cables. I'm also running SFP plus DAC from the 16XG to the 48 port ubiquity switch, and that provides all the networking for my house and pretty much everything else. I also have a spare NVIDIA grid card here. This is a grid K1, I believe. Um, you'll notice here, this is a Shaw business cable modem. Um, I actually have dual WAN. I'll be showing the other one shortly. Uh, this cable modem does 750 megabits per second down and 120 megabits per second up and it uh, goes to a virtual machine that does the dual WAN balancing uh, for my entire network. And so this is the other side of the dual WAN setup. Um, as you can see, I've got a fiber modem. This is TELUS Pure Fiber for Business. I get about one gig up and one gig down. It's really awesome. I get about three milliseconds latencies. Um, one of the reasons why I picked up the second connection is because I do a lot of work with VDI and I wanted to try to get the uh, latency on my side as low as possible for when I travel. Um, and it just works freaking great in my initial testing. I only got it set up uh, just in the last week. You'll notice that I have the uh, network cable going from the fire of a modem down to another Unify switch, which then shoots it back up to the room with all the servers and storage and networking equipment. Um, you'll also notice that I have a Synology DS1813 Plus. I've got about 16 terabytes of usable storage in here. Uh, this is what I use for my uh, backups. Um, I mentioned earlier that I have the disk to disk backups running to the MSA and then I have a, it uh, goes again with a backup copy job to the Synology which then gets pushed out to the cloud. I also have an old HPE ML350 G5. This is powered off, unplugged and has no purpose whatsoever but to uh, look good and hold the Synology unit. You'll notice underneath the desk here I have an HPE ML310E Gen 8 V2. This server is actually pretty cool. I have a IO Crest um, NVMe to PCIe card in here, and I've got four Sabrent uh, two terabyte NVMe disks. So this little server provides, uh, I'm using TrueNAS, 
and it provides my ESXi cluster with uh, eight terabytes of NVMe storage via iSCSI. And it has a dual port SFP plus NIC, which then connects up to the Ubiquiti switch and then goes to the compute servers. And what I use this little guy for is video editing, as well as my uh, VDI home lab work with uh, persistent desktops, instant clones and whatnot, and all that fancy stuff. I've got a extra spare computer here, as well as two UPSs to power everything in the event of a power failure. And finally, can't forget the air conditioner. I've got a nice dual inverter LG air conditioner unit that's Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, this thing is super slick. It works great during the summer and in the winter when uh, not too much cooling is required because of that dual inverter, it uses almost no power whatsoever. And that's it. That's my home lab. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and, sus don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.